Okay, let's try out the new camcorder. It's got me a new Sony camcorder, but this is not the purpose of this video. I felt the need to do a video on my church's, uh, how we pipe music throughout the church. So I'm doing that now. At the beginning is a E-Machine, E-Tower 533, and yes, that means 533 megahertz. Still runs Windows 98 and Winamp, though for this purpose, I think I like Media Player slightly better. That The signal comes out of the computer into this Akai AAR22. Now, if this looks a bit like the infamous Technics receivers that are very popular in the UXW Bill household. And some of the the control labels have popped off. I think if I remember right, that's the tuner right there and here's the tape one, tape two controls. But you can see all this. And this actually this receiver here acts as A a source selector and B it uh, drives two sets of outdoor speakers. When all this was first set up before I got active and stuff around here, they were using an RCA surround receiver. However, I switched it to this because uh, it actually has A and B speakers, and surround obviously wasn't needed, but we all know how not easy it is anymore to find a non-surround receiver, so when this thing got donated, I put it into service. And I, if needed, I can turn you know, one set on, off for the other if needed, and that has come up from time to time, then it's got bass tone controls, presets for the EQ settings, balance, mono and auto for FM. So, comes out of the tape output of the Akai unit and comes into this equalizer. Now the equalizer serves two purposes. One, it does the obvious thing, the obvious thing of EQ and the signal. However, on the other 70 volt amp we used to run, on this TOA, which has kind of gone south and it's about to go through the floor here, as heavy as it is, it just has a mono input. And just combining the left and right, um, it's just kind of throwing things off. So the EQ kind of acts as a buffer between the left and right channels and the the two don't mind being shorted together on the output now I'm coming off the record output of this into this little realistic amplifier that drives the speakers in the coffee house just a pair of six and a half inch uh, two-way ceiling speakers I believe they're rust sound the main output takes a quick side trip up to this um, AT&T page pal so that way we can page through the phone system and so you can see it going in here and then coming back out. And you also see this orange wire also goes to the phone system for music on hold. And it finally comes out of the page pal and into the uh, inputs right there. Now again, the uh, this accepts stereo inputs, but the TOA that we were using did not. So... It's just when I had to put this into place, it's just throw together an RCA and make it work. And, of course, I still need to make it mono anyway because the page pal takes mono. And I've got a monitor speaker over there. I can just hook up when I need to. It's probably not good to run both a 70 volt and a not 70 volt at the same time, but the amp doesn't seem to care. And while I've left that hooked up before, I just generally hook it up when I need a monitor speaker. Which, one thing interesting about this monitor, it's a DynaWave. And, isn't that kind of the weirder, more weird looking speakers you've ever seen? I'm not sure what kind of tweeter that is. That woofer really isn't a woofer, it's actually a passive radiator. Spin this around here, and it's got a little weight to it. It's a DynaWave by Sawa Fuji America Corporation, made in the USA, 6 ohm impedance, 
and you can see there's the real woofer there on the back and then you can see it's got a Radio Shack uh, 70 volt transformer on the back which is not hooked up so that is the music system here at my church just cobbled together off free or super cheaply obtained electronics uh, a friend of mine gave me the e-machine and while it's not the first computer we had it it very quickly got pressed into service after the uh, one we had suffered a motherboard failure and uh, so this got pressed into service pretty quickly it's got a DVD ROM drive though that obviously isn't um, in use right now I'm actually gonna have to make another one of these for our downtown location where it's been a we've been wanting to get music playing outside of there for a while so I'm hoping to work on that this uh, spring maybe uh, do a little parts express order and what was the other thing I was gonna tell in this video oh and why a computer you might ask well a donated computer is a lot less expensive than a CD changer and a CD changer running 24 7 in this kind of a setup uh, we were averaging about two and a half years and then the changer would crap out or become unreliable so and the sad part is that last one is a very nice Sony CD changer 400 disc it could play mp3s and while it's not really reliable enough for this 24-7 thing, it's been repurposed elsewhere in the church and is working just fine for its little more occasional use there. So, I hope this video came out okay. Like I said, it's first run of my new camcorder, uh, Black Friday special. Hopefully I'll get a chance to do a video on it soon. Here are speakers out outside one entrance. These are hooked up as the B speakers. These are outside the old main entrance. Kind of a little smaller covered area. And there's the outdoor speakers. And yes, that is, that's Russ on the grill and bird you know what around it. Birds like the nest up there. And there's the other one. There's all its rust and bird poop glory. These speakers on this side are RCA from Radio Shack. The ones on the uh, other entrance are GC Electronics. And these are just, here in the lobby, are just generic Qualm um, ceiling speakers. We actually got these uh, from a Spiegel store that went out of business, which is where we got that other, that, the 270 volt amps I showed you and the AT&T PagePal. And there are six uh, speakers here in the lobby. And there's a speaker in... Oh, it's locked. See if the other side's unlocked. Yeah, this. In every major bathroom, there's a speaker. And this bathroom has showers in it for visiting mission groups or whatever. So, I used an indoor outdoor speaker. In the main bathrooms, I uh, still need to take that speaker cable down. And by the way, this just shows my frugalness. We needed a super long speaker cable, so I just got a long 16-2 um, long garden cord from Walmart for 16 bucks, and then bought the ends for eight fifty at a local store and just soldered them on myself. A lot cheaper than buying the actual uh, buying an actual speaker cable that long. It should be just about as durable. And then, since there are no showers in this one, it just gets a standard Qualm ceiling speaker. And these are the Rust Town six and a half inch speakers that are in the coffee shop. Yeah, I kind of cracked the ceiling tile when that one put in and. I can't seem to find any spare ceiling tiles, not to mention the fact it's not a job I'm particularly looking forward to anyway. So, those are the coffee shop speakers, and 
There we go, it focused. Now, one thing that's interesting is, see this wall texture? This is the same wall texture I put in my family room. This is where I got the idea. I fell in love with this look, so I put it in my family room. However, instead of a purple accent wall, I, I textured it like that, but I, and I painted it red.